Hi friends and welcome to the Fiber Band Podcast. My name is Ali and I am coming to you today from Adelaide, Australia, where I live with my husband, our two sons, our dog Shorty and our six chickens. This is predominantly a knitting podcast where I share about my making, my inspiration, my purchases. And today's episode is actually all about my recent trip to Bendigo in Victoria, where I attended the Australian Sheep and Wool Show for the very first time. It was such an amazing experience. I lived in the moment. I took a lot of photos, but I took barely any footage because it was just all so exciting and a little overwhelming. And it was amazing. Absolutely still on a high a few days after I returned. So I would like to share with you what we got up to, what I purchased, some of the amazing makers that I was fortunate enough to visit and purchase from. I didn't really go with the budget and I didn't really go with a plan. My plan was to experience it. I've been to knitting festivals here in Adelaide before and I generally don't make much of a plan. My theory was that I wouldn't buy a lot. That theory was incorrect. There were so many amazing makers and such great inspiration at the sheep show that I just could not resist bringing home all the things. Before I get into all of my amazing purchases, I did just want to talk about the actual experience. Back in March or April of this year, one of my amazing friends that I Zoom knit with, Zoom knit with, yes, reached out to a group of us and wanted to see if we were keen to come to the Bendigo Sheep and Wool Festival this year and if we would be keen to do a share house arrangement, get an Airbnb, have a knitting getaway together. So I jumped on the chance. I've been wanting to go to the Bendigo Sheep and Wool Festival for the last three or four years. Not that it happened for a couple of years, but I've known about it since maybe 2018 or 2019. And I've been really keen to go pretty much every year that it's been on. But it's just never really worked out. Work's been busy. That was traditionally a very busy time of year for, my, for me at work. It still is. But when this opportunity came up, I just could not resist it. So I jumped at the chance and booked my flight to Bendigo the day that it was confirmed that we had a house to stay in. <laughs> and I was so excited. Well, I booked a flight to Melbourne. You, I can't fly directly to Bendigo from here. So I booked a flight to Melbourne and was going to figure out the rest of it as we got closer to the day. I booked my flights, booked some leave from work and was so excited to go and it really exceeded all of my expectations. It was just phenomenal. So a group of seven of us in total, including myself, ended up sharing a house in Bendigo. And it was basically a podcaster and designer house. Some of our Australian podcasters and a couple who also design were in attendance and we had the most amazing time. The group consisted of Gay Anne from per Perfect Pairings who organised the amazing Airbnb that we all stayed in. Danny from Anita's Suitcase who came, flew all the way over from Perth. Jane from Mindful Making AU, she is in Sydney. Vera Marku, who, who is an amazing designer who I got a chance to meet for the very first time as well. And she is also from Sydney. She flew over with Jane. Kath from the Mindful Melbourne Maker podcast, at, who is also designing amazing sock patterns at the moment. And lovely Michelle, who is a colleague of Gay Anne's, was also there. And we just had an amazing time. Michelle generously picked me up from the airport and then took me back to the airport at the end of the weekend. And I'm so grateful to her. We had such an amazing drive there and back. Just chatted about all the things. It was really wonderful. The experience was so phenomenal. We sat, we knit, we drank copious amounts of tea. We wound yarn. We discussed patterns. We discussed inspiration. We discussed life. And it was just so wonderful. Such an amazing experience. I knew that I was going to have fun this weekend, but I had no idea how much fun I would have with this group of amazing people. 
Now I didn't take a lot of footage at the actual sheep and wool show because it was just so much sensory overload. I tried to take photos with everyone that I met and if I didn't take the photo then one of my amazing housemates took it. Kath in particular um, took many of the photos so I'm so grateful to her for thinking of taking the photos she really did instigate a lot of them which is fantastic and means I have some great memories from the trip. I did manage to bring home quite a bit of yarn which I'm looking at on my desk in front of me right now and it just brings me so much joy. So let's get into the acquisitions. I have quite a few here so I will try to make it quite brief but I would love to share these with you because I feel like if I do this on a normal podcast episode it will be a very long episode. So let's get into it. Our first stop when we arrived was at Half Baked Hand Dyed and I picked up two skeins of amazing self-striping DK weight sock yarn from Danny's store. The first colorway that I picked out when I was at Danny's store was this one called Obsession, <laughs> which I had no idea that that's what it was called until I just looked at it now, but it is perfect. So this is an amazing colorway. Absolutely my color vibe. The pinks, the gold, I cannot wait to knit this yarn up. This amazing yarn will be knit up into the Hobart socks by Mindful Melbourne Maker, who is Kath, who was my buddy, <laughs> my shopping buddy, inspiration, enabler, all the things for much of our visit to Bendigo. So can't wait to cast these on. Now I did pick up a second colorway as well. This one is called Mirkwood. It is so beautiful. This will end up being possibly a pair for one of my boys, but maybe not. <laughs> we'll see who this ends up being for. I just thought it was quite neutral and um, that it could really be for anyone in the family. So I got those two at Half Baked Hand Dyed. And while we were there, I forgot on the first visit, but on the second visit, most of us participated in designing our own ideal colorway. Um, so that was very fun as well. I really enjoyed that process. It was, um, the hardest part for me was picking a name because I find naming things a bit challenging, but that was a really fun part of the experience as well. Our next stop was at Fiber Naturally, and that was just a feast for the senses. There was some amazing alpaca yarn. There was some amazing merino yarn. The fiber just felt so buttery soft it was phenomenal and I came away <laughs> with my first sweaters quantity from this stool and it was this beautiful alpaca allure merino luxury and this colorway I think is avocado avocado batch this is a four ply yarn it is 70% merino, 30% alpaca, so it is amazingly soft. It is so nice. It's 100% Australian. It is 365 meters per 100 grams, and I love it. Now, not quite sure exactly what this will become yet, but later in the day, I went to Melbourne City Dye Works. And Melbourne City Dye Works is an amazing dyer from Melbourne. Uh, who specializes in some non-superwash yarns at the moment, but I have been following Pauline for many years and have quite a bit of her yarn in stash. I actually ended up grabbing something that she brought as a de-stash that would pair really well with this potentially, though it may not go with this project, but I could not resist the Isaya mohair that she was de-stashing. This colorway is so good and I feel like it's quite complimentary. So these may go together, they may not go together, I'm not sure yet, but this is in the colorway 67 and it's the Isaya Silk Mohair, 75% Kid Mohair, 25% Silk and 212 meters per 100 grams. So that was really lovely as well. I think this may have been my next purchase. We went to the 
tea time retreats, I think it was, stand. And they had the most amazing progress keepers and stitch markers and um, needle toppers. And I thought, I, I love needle toppers. And let's get something really cute and memorable from the sheep show. So I ended up finding these ones that look like my little shorty. Aren't they adorable? I could not resist these. So I figured they'll be really good when I'm working on projects for the boys in particular because most of my other needle toppers are very feminine. So I feel like this is a nice little neutral. So that was a great find. I'm so happy with these. We did try to make it to pretty much every shed. And at one of the sheds, they had wood turners and they had some amazing products in their beautiful bowls. They had some sock blockers, which were stunning. My friend Jane got a cheese knife, but her and I, together also were struck by these dining mushrooms. So I grabbed a dining mushroom. And this is from the Bendigo Wood Turners, which is very exciting that these are handmade and they're nice and sturdy. And I will be dining a sock shortly. My son has worn the first hole into one of his hand knit socks. So I think this will be perfect to help me fix those socks for him. One of the things that I did on the first day was take my yarn store passport around and did the um, yarn crawl that Dear Prue had uh, organized with a bunch of vendors, which was amazing because it meant that I got to meet these people and talk to them and squish all of their beautiful things. So I, um, one of the first stops, actually I think my first stop was Great Southern Yarn and I picked up this beautiful skein there. This is in the colorway Del Catherine Barton. It's 100% SRS non-mules Australian Merino, four ply single spun. There are 340 meters to 100 grams here. And this is a non-superwash yarn, I believe. And I am amazed at how soft and buttery these yarns were. All of them, they had a five ply, eight ply, um, and all of them were phenomenal. I controlled myself and just bought the one skein, <laughs> but I really did want more. And yesterday I was on their website actually looking at more of their yarn and I can imagine I'll have much more of this in my future because it's so good. It's just that good. And then I think uh, shortly after that, I found the Great Ocean Road, Great Ocean Road woolen mill, Great Ocean Road yarns. I don't have their tag, unfortunately. And I picked up some of their seconds and I got a sweat sweater's quantity in this beautiful yarn. This is a five ply. Um, again, no specific plans for this one, but I am very excited to work with it. It is, again, extremely soft. It is a merino. The way it's been spun is beautiful. And the owner did mention that these are seconds because they're not as regular as their main lots. But I'm really not fussed. I love that it's got that sort of natural look to it and might have some thicker and thin bits. There's some thicker bits there, which I think will just add to the magic of this yarn. The next yarn was purchased at the Pearl Box and it is this beautiful rose gold color. This is on their Maven base, 65% superwash merino, 20% silk, 15% yak. And it's 480 meters to 120 grams. And it is actually in the color rose gold. Thank you to Kath for pointing this one out for me. Um, I had a bit of a theme with my luggage. Everything was rose gold <laughs> on this trip. So this was very fitting. And I was actually looking for a single ply yarn um, to go with a yarn that I purchased from these guys back in March at the Fiber, Fe Fiber Feast Festival. Um, for the Sarissa shawl that I'm planning to knit by Mindful Making or Jane Bale. Uh, and I think these, these will go perfectly with that mohair that I purchased back in March. 
So I do have a very specific plan for these, which is wonderful. The next place I'll talk about is Fancy Yarns. Now Fancy Yarns stock a lot of variety of yarns, some specialty yarns and um, a lot of Australian yarn as well. They have a lot of Queensland collection stock in their range. So I picked up this Myrtle base, which is a eucalyptus yarn. And this is the Colourway Lapis. I got three of them. And this one also has a plan. I saw this yarn when I visited them in March at their stall at Fibre Feast as well. And I couldn't decide on the colour at that point. And maybe the colour, I think I was looking at this one actually. I think they may only have had two skeins of it at the time. And I needed three. The plan for this is to do a summer weight love note. Eucalyptus, it will be very breathable. It will be very um, drapey. <laughs> Couldn't think of the word. And it's 100% lyocell, which is um, sustainable and compostable vegan silk spun from eucalyptus. So I'm very excited about this one as well. One of the other vendors that was part of the yarn crawl was Leecham Wool, and I think that's how it's pronounced. Um, and I picked this amazing skein of yarn from them in the colorway Bloodwood. This is a four ply and it's 100 grams. I'm not sure of the yardage, I don't think. Oh, yep, yeah, it says it here. Around 400 meters to 100 grams of yardage there, so, or meterage even. These guys are South Australian based, so they're quite local to me. And when I got home, I was talking to my husband about, we need a road trip out there. We need to go check out their farm. They've got a farm shop up out there. Their yarn is just so, so amazing. And I've been saying this about a lot of them. And I think I had this perception that superwash yarn is very soft and non-superwash was a little bit more um, rustic. That, that's the perception that I've had because I have predominantly knit with superwash yarn but this is not superwash and this is amazingly soft. It is softer than some of my superwash yarns. I am so amazed and so impressed by it. Uh, so yes, definitely will be buying more of this yarn. Now you may notice a bit of a colour theme. Great Southern Yarns and Leecham are pretty much the same colour. Pretty much, not quite. This one, the plan is a shawl. Maybe a one, a one skein shawl or maybe bring it together with something else. This one I actually bought for a hat because I realised as I was packing I had no pinky coloured hats that I wanted to take with me. So I figure, I don't know about a muscle burrow, maybe I'll make something else with it. Not sure really but I am really excited to knit this up. Again, this is another uh, sustainable yarn, ethically and sustainably managed pole merino sheep, Australian grown and processed. So absolutely brilliant. Really great to support local through going to one of these festivals and finding these amazing um, yarn producers. And yarn dyes, of course, as well. The next sweater quantity because I went a little crazy, is for, actually, and I bought a pattern as well, it's for the Alma Cardigan by Sana and Co. We got a chance to meet Susanna and it was wonderful to meet her and to be able to see so many of her beautiful samples and oh, it was just so good. Now this pattern has just been released and she had a bunch of samples up there, including one that Gayanne had knit. And I fell in love with this sample. But I didn't see the pack in the cubes, like I didn't see that color combination in the cubes when I first looked. And I thought, oh, I'll figure something out later. And then the stall calmed down a little bit. It was a little bit more accessible to get in there. And I walked in and I saw it. And I had to get it. Again, all the plums this year, apparently. This is the kit that I purchased, and it is Louis and Lola yarn, who we all know I love. Karina, who is the dyer behind Louis and Lola, has collaborated with Susanna on uh, kits for this amazing pattern. 
and this is her merino possum DK base 80% merino 20% possum fur 248 meters or 271 yards in 100 grams it is again non superwash so I am so excited to work with this base I am so excited to steak for the first time I did a steaking class with Dia Pru a few months ago and I I'm really excited to be able to utilize some of those skills in this project. And now I have the yarn, I have the pattern, I have techniques that I've tried, and I can't wait to put that all together. So that will be the Alma Cardigan by Susanna of Sana and Co. So, so excited. As I said, I did buy more than I had expected that I would, but it's really not surprising because I could have bought so much more <laughs> if my luggage had been a bit bigger. Uh, one of the other stops that we went to was to visit Lisa of 1121 Windmills. Kath and I beelined for her new sock blockers. If you have not seen these, prepare to be amazed. Um, she does have these available on pre-order on her website at the moment, I believe. And they were so beautiful. She has three colours, I think, available, but of course I have to go the pink. So these are my new sock blockers. So 11 t windmills, and they have this beautiful little pattern through them. I got myself the size small in the pink, obviously, and I'm so excited to try them out. She had the other sizes there as well, and that was a really exciting purchase. She did sell out later that day, so we were very happy to have gotten those, or the pink ones I think sold out. I think she may have had the other colors still. Uh, so that was really fun. And while I was there, I also picked up these fantastic earrings. I've been eyeing these off since she first released them a few years ago, but seeing them in person <laughs> obviously went the pink. I could never decide which color to get. <laughs> <laughs> these are a lovely pale pink and they've got some lovely tonality through them and I love them so much really beautiful so that was really fun to get to meet Lisa and I uh, get to hug Lisa after all these years it was really wonderful to do that and uh, final purchase at the wool show on the first day this is all the first day was from fluff and nonsense and I seem to be gravitating to a very specific palette this year at the moment. These are the beautiful colorways that I got. They're all on single ply. It's a Tibetan, Tibetan? Tibetan singles yarn. And it's equivalent to a four ply fingering weight. It is 65% superwash merino, 20% silk, 15% yak. It's 120 grams and 480 meters. So that sounds very similar to this base. So if I had leftovers, they would go really beautifully together as well. If I wanted to have a fourth color in there, if I have any of this leftover, which I think I will, I think I'll have a good half a skein leftover from the Sarissa shawl. Um, but yeah, how pretty. And like I said, very much on theme this year with my color choices. She had a beautiful green as well and I have slight regrets that I didn't also grab the green. So many regrets. So much yarn. And that was it for the Bendigo Sheep and Wool show day one. But once we finished there we went to the Bendigo Woolen Mills. I have been to the Bendigo Woolen Mills before and I loved it. Loved the experience. Loved the back room. There's a back room with some specials, uh, some, some things that aren't available on their website, which is really fun to explore. But I did end up getting a couple of standard things from the front room and one thing from the back room this time. Um, and I have plans for two out of the three things that I bought. So the first thing I picked up was the classic five ply in the color raffia. These come in 200 gram balls and I got three of these for a sweater's quantity. And I think I'll be knitting the Milo jumper by Vera Marku with this. I think the cables will just be really beautiful in this light colored yarn. And I'm really excited to get started on that. I have the luxury eight ply that I knit with last year. 
and that's a really soft yarn and I thought it was softer than um, I thought it would be softer than the classic when I first bought it but I bought it online from sample cards or shade cards which doesn't quite give you the the feel of the whole ball of the yarn so I'm really amazed at how lovely and soft this is so because I was really happy about this purchase I also found this beautiful chili color in the eight ply and this one I have a plan to do a vest I think I think I want to do a vest now I've seen a couple of petite knit vests that um, two, two pearls in a pod have knit in recent times I think I'll knit one of those in this I can't remember the name of those vests right now um, but I will definitely share that when I start those projects but that is a plan for this amazing chili colorway I am loving the um, neutrals and the autumnals at the moment so that's really lovely it's actually coming up very vibrant on my monitor but it is it probably is quite vibrant it's a beautiful color the last thing that I got from Bendigo Woolen Mills was uh, something from the back room I was super inspired by Cayenne who picked some of this up and I was like oh my gosh I need this in my life I have no plans for what this will be. I don't think it matters. <laughs> but this is something I would not be able to order online from them because it was one of their specials in the back room. This is in the colorway pink. It is 85% mohair, 15% wool, and it is a hand wash yarn, which makes me think that it is non-super wash. But again, so super soft. I got a sweater's quantity of this one as well. So that was the first day. First day, quite a lot. And I came back to the, to the accommodation and I laid it all out and went, oh my gosh, how am I going to get this all home? I did miss one thing. One thing is missing from the first day because I did top it up on the second day. But I went to Tandy, picked up some more non-superwash yarn. And this is in the colorway cream. It's a four ply. 384 meters to 100 grams and these are also Australian grown in Tand Wan Court processed in Geelong and New, and New Zealand so Geelong Australia and New Zealand and I got a sweater's quantity of this as well now my aim when I went to the show was that I wanted a cream yarn to knit a cable jumper <laughs> I made that happen Thank you, Jane, for pointing these out. So Jane from Mindful Making helped me choose these ones. I wasn't quite sure whether to get the four ply or the eight ply. There were so many varieties and options. And I ended up deciding with her help to grab the four ply. And I can always hold it double if I want to knit something that is actually an eight ply pattern. There are quite a few beautiful cable jumpers that I've been eyeing off. I have quite a few saved to my Ravelry favorites. <laughs> And that list just keeps growing, so I just need to decide on which pattern it will be. But this will be a cabled jumper sweater of some some type. Like I said, I had no idea how I was going to get this all home. Luckily, I was able to expand my suitcase and fit everything in. I did not take a photo of my full suitcase because I thought I'll do it when I get home. But then when I got home, I just wanted to get it all unpacked. Now that evening, once we were all done with the shopping and the amazingness, we went back to our Airbnb and we had a bunch of the vendors join us, vendors and attendees, join us for a pizza and wine night. And so we had a great time catching up and chatting, reviewing the day and the purchases and getting inspired yet again about what we would do the next day. On the second day, I was much more restrained. I had packed my suitcase and thought, okay, don't think we can fit much more in these bags so it was much calmer much less frenzied and it was a really enjoyable second day we ate a lot we ate a lot of donuts which I'll talk about shortly <laughs> but I did buy a couple of things the first thing I got was a candle it smells divine it's frangipani and my goodness 
so excited to light this one. It's going to be so great to be able to cozy up with this candle to remind me of my trip to Bendigo. Just got a small candle there. They have some beautiful things. This is from the Melbourne Candle Club. Um, they're soy candles, locally made in Melbourne. Then, I think it was next, that we stopped by the Crystal Cat Stitchery stand once again. We had stopped by there on the first day and so so much overwhelmed with all the beautiful things. I'm pretty sure Kath grabbed a bag that first day. I decided on one the next day. So uh, myself and Gayanne actually, uh, Gayanne had something very specific in mind which she picked up and she talks about on her latest episode. I got this beautiful bag. It's so pretty and it's just got pockets and it, it's so good and it's drawstring I'm actually using one of Crystal Cat Stitchery's bags for my current um, Stephen West MCAL project that I haven't finished yet that I've been working on recently and I love these bags they're such a good size four skein project fits in here without any problem highly recommend a beautiful local Australian maker there's the tag there so that was the only project bag that I purchased, but I did inspire a lot of my friends with some Shan's Yarns bags um, that I was using from a previous purchase that you can hear about again on Gayanne's channel. <laughs> she talks about them and she shows her bag too. I'll show mine in the next podcast episode. I did show it back in March as well, April whenever I did the recap of Fiber Feast. Now my next two purchases were sort of tool related, I guess. So uh, we went into one of the back sheds for the second time and Kath pointed out these amazing tools to me and I can't remember the store name now. If you know who makes these, can you please let me know in the comments below because I would love to be able to reach out to them on Instagram and say thank you. Um, because I completely did not get um, a business card, didn't even think about it at the time. But I got one of these amazing iCord makers. It makes an iCord in no time at all. I'm so excited to try it out for the next Stephen West pattern, which I'm sure will be full of iCords. They, they usually are. I got the goldy colour because why not? They had a lot of different colors there. They had some great tools actually um, on offer at this store. My creative garage was vending and they had the most beautiful Murray Mecco um, fabric project bags. And I could not decide between the black and the red pink one. I loved them both. I thought the black was very classic and I loved the red pink one because red pink. <laughs> so I couldn't decide and I didn't take one. But I did grab some DK weight sock yarn from her, a sock set. This was actually um, the exclusive sock set for the Bendigo Sheep and Wool Show. And I figure, well, this is my only real exclusive yarn that I purchased, I think, that I'm aware of. And it's actually called Sprinkles of Bendigo. And it is so pretty. It's a 75% fine superwash merino, 25% nylon. 250 meters or 274 yards per 100 grams and it has two minis with it as well so this is my special bendigo yarn and that was my last yarn purchase and then i just got one more thing as we were sort of sitting and um preparing ourselves mentally to leave which was really hard to do to be honest and we had walked past this stall a couple of times it's called, it's called all buttoned up jewelry i think and they had shawl pins and I thought well I'm I think I have one here somewhere but I haven't been able to find it since I moved and I picked this one up it's kind of come off of its little holder there but yeah I grabbed that shawl pin and a few of us grabbed the shawl pin on the way out <laughs> now that is all the purchases but there were a couple of lovely other things that I got um, from the group that we were staying with. So on the first night, we actually did a Christmas in July yarn swap. So we each brought some yarn from our stash to swap with our housemates. And it was so much fun. <laughs> it took us a little while to figure out the process of how we were going to do this, but I think it worked out really well. 
and we all walked away with beautiful things. So I was lucky to get this amazing sock yarn by Heather Maid. It's the Luxury Sock, four ply fingering, three, six, 366 meters per 100 grams, 80% wool, 20% nylon, and the colorway is rainbow in cloudy sky, which is so pretty. I'm so excited to knit this up. It is so stunning. So this was um, one that Kath from Mindful Melbourne Maker had contributed to the swap. And in there, there was actually, there were actually some extra goodies. I was very lucky to get some little washi tape stickers, little flowers, as well as some stitch markers. You can never have too many stitch markers. <laughs> and the colors match the yarn. Oh, there were also these um, knits with love and magic cards you can put in with your gift knits to give people instructions on how to look after their items. And then the last thing, um, Danny from A Knitter's Suitcase uh, makes project bags and notion pouches and has an Etsy store that I'll link down below as well. I'll link everyone down below so you can check out their channels. But uh, Danny gave us each a little housemate gift on arrival as well and this was the beautiful notions pouch that she made for me it's got some lovely fabric on the inside as well so it was so thoughtful thank you so much danny i cannot tell you how amazing this was i mean i'm trying to tell you how amazing this was but i feel like if you have the opportunity to go to the Bendigo Sheep and Wool Festival or any other festival, take it with both hands. <laughs> it is such an amazing experience. And going with friends who are so like-minded just made the experience all that more magical for me. The group was just so amazing. These women made the experience phenomenal for me and I am so grateful to them for their friendship, their generosity, their kindness. So I hadn't met anyone in the group before except for Jane in person. So that's the other thing, the amazing thing about makers and knitters. You have a relationship online, you may comment on each other's photos and posts, each other's videos. Uh, sometimes you might do a Zoom night from the comfort of your own home and you build these connections and it is so wonderful to actually meet these people in real life and have that real friendship grow and develop and i am so grateful for that in this knitting journey it's been such a wonderful experience i liken our bendigo sheep and wool festival to rhinebeck i think I've been wanting to go to Rhinebeck since I first heard about Rhinebeck as well. And one day I will get to the New York Sheep and Wool Festival. <laughs> that is on the cards. I just have no idea when. It is a long way to travel. I am so excited about the prospect of attending more of these amazing festivals around Australia, around the world, if possible. Donuts. I have not talked about the donuts to any extent that they deserve yet. <laughs> Before we arrived on the first day, Kath had mentioned that they do the best jam donuts at Bendigo. She had been the previous year. And we we're all like, okay, we'll try a donut. Why not? Let's try a donut. Oh my gosh, these donuts were phenomenal. We had a few each day <laughs> because they were just so good. I like a Krispy Kreme plain glazed donut, very uninspired with my donut eating. Don't generally like any filling in my donut. <laughs> but oh my gosh, this jam was perfect. They were hot jam donuts, but the filling did not burn your mouth. If you ever go to the Bendigo Sheep and Wool Festival, you must try the hot jam donuts. Hot tip. <laughs> Thank you, Kath, for the recommendation. We were all completely obsessed with these. And the weather was a little dreary, a little cold, and these just warmed us up so much. It was absolutely amazing. Now, I am not sure whether I'll put the footage that I took before I started talking or after I started talking. I did download the footage the other day to see what I got. Oh, there isn't a lot of footage of the actual yarns or anything like that, which is a shame. 
I'm usually much better at that than I was at this particular event. But like I said, it was just, I was living in the moment. I was experiencing it in real life and it was phenomenal. So thank you so much for watching. Comment down below if you've ever been to a yarn festival that just left you feeling so happy and full of joy. <laughs> My heart is so full. It was just the most amazing experience. If you have any ideas for any of the projects or any of the yarns that I've purchased here, if you have a three skein shawl project idea, three colours for the fluff and nonsense yarn, for example, I'd love to know about those patterns too. It's always fun to be inspired by you and your makes and your pattern, pattern suggestions. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. If you've gotten this far, please like and subscribe. It really helps this channel out a lot. And I look forward to recording a proper po podcast episode soon. I've got so much to show you in that I've been making a lot. Um, and I'm excited to share those projects with you too. But I didn't want to muddy up a proper podcast with these amazing purchases. So I thought I'd separate them. I look forward to talking with you soon and I hope that you have a lot of making time and get to enjoy your amazing stash as well. So yeah, <laughs> I need to find somewhere where I'm going to put all of this because that's pretty full. <laughs> but we'll figure it out. I have a big basket next to me. Maybe it'll just live there for now. We'll see. Take care, happy knitting, and I look forward to chatting with you soon. Bye. Will